Uh, there might be some episode in the future at some point where somebody on camera is in their underwear. We're gonna turn the kid-friendly button off for that. All right, good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, it's 10 a.m. And that means it's time for real estate in your underwear. Of course, not in our underwear, uh, but stay tuned, you never know. For today, uh, we're gonna talk about something I'm really, really excited about. We have Seth Campbell and Talia Swanson, Seth V. Campbell. Seth V. Campbell. And Talia Swanson here with CBRE Mega. And we're gonna talk about commercial real estate today, guys. I'm really pumped because this is something that I know, I know, I guess more than the average bear, but um, certainly not even close to enough to be dangerous. Um, Seth and I have known each other for a long time, probably too long, I think our wives would probably It's been a long there. time, but yeah. it's uh, been fun. But uh, why don't we start off, guys? Do you want to introduce yourselves? Talk, sure. Tell us how long you've been in the business, where you're from, and whatever else you want to say. Tali, you sure. want to go first? Sure. Okay. Uh, I've been in real estate for 17 years. I started in marketing at a local architecture firm. I then lived in Chicago for six years and worked for an international hotel chain as well as a commercial real estate investment firm. I came back to Omaha and I've been at CBRE Mega as vice president and broker for the last seven years. I really enjoy working with buyers and sellers of investment properties, including multifamily, as well as with landlords and tenants in, retail, in leasing retail and office properties. I try to utilize my marketing background to really creatively promote my listings, as well as assisting a client in a property search for that ideal property, uh, which can take some creativity and resourcefulness as we are finding that a lot of these deals are off-market transactions. For sure, yeah, we're seeing a lot of that in residential, a lot of off-market properties, a lot of off-market mm -hmm. sales. And mm -hmm. I can't imagine what you guys are doing to get those off-market properties. Creativity is definitely the word, so very mm -hmm. cool. Seth? Yeah, I'm Seth Campbell. Um, I've lived in Omaha all my life. Uh, Elkhorn grew up there for a lot of it, moved to Miller West for high school. Um, been licensed in Nebraska since 2005, um, joined CBRE Mega um, in 2006, I believe, late 2006. So I've been doing this for about 14 years, or excuse me, going on 14 years. Um, and what I really like is, you know, most commercial brokers, they, you know, there's leasing, there's investments, there's sales, and, and everybody does a little bit of everything. They specialize in just a little bit in Omaha. Uh, what I specialize or look to um, and bring to the table is just growing up the family that I have been over the years. My family's own commercial real estate in town for uh, probably 50 years now uh, through generations. And, it, and when I was 8, 10 years old, I, I was the guy picking up weeds. Yeah. You know, you're, you're a real estate kid. And, oh, yeah. you know, you're picking up weeds. You're doing paint turnovers Painting. for departments. and. Painting, and, painting, you know, painting. that's what I did yeah. for, for working my way through college. Yep. And um, once I got out of college, it's one of those things that your dad looked at you and said, I said, you know what, I know more. <laughs> and he looked at me and says, no, you don't. Yeah. You're a salesman, go do that. So yeah. uh, it was the best thing he ever did though. I, uh, I met up with uh, Ginsburg at uh, CBRE and we really have had, a, um, I've really had a good relationship over there and really loved it. Um, and love the the landlord side of things, but, and that's the part I understand. Mm -hmm. um, is taking something that maybe somebody else's problem, a property, or maybe a pain that they are feeling in their portfolio. Yeah, um, and really saying, hey, look, I don't care if you give me the best stuff. I don't want the best stuff. Give me something that you need help with, mm -hmm. and I want to help you solve that problem. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really been the best way for me to, over the years of of building relationships. Yeah, and. Um, Doing what I can to help out, and it's really been, it's been really rewarding. Yeah, that's awesome. Relationships are key in all of our businesses, and you know that that growing up in in real estate, you can't buy that kind of education for sure. We both yeah. got the luxury of that. Um, well, that's great, guys. Thanks for the intros. Um, I got to say, so Seth and I have known each other since college, right? UNO, yeah. the real estate you know, school. Real estate program. He was he gone. was hoping I wasn't going to talk about this, but oh no, we're going to talk about this. We're going to do this. <laughs> okay. All right, let's do it. So Seth, uh, Seth and I were in what was it? Income property appraisals yeah. class, Neil I think Doc, it was. Doc Nielsen. 
And for those of you that know me, you all know that math is, is I wouldn't call that like a 10. He's a genius, the, folks. Yeah, right, not exactly a savant. So we were working through some some issues. It was a, it, what, what was it, Dr. Sam? It was Dr. I think Nielsen. Dr. Nielsen, Nielsen, Nielsen that's Nielsen right. Property appraisal, yeah. Oh my goodness, and I was shout really- Shout out to Dr. Nielsen. Shout out to Dr. Nielsen. <laughs> yes, yes. On the assessor site, don't charge my properties. Never worked so hard to get a B in my entire life. <laughs> uh, but I was working on some problem in, in the lunchroom and Seth walks in and says, you don't know how to figure that out or something like that. <laughs> And at that point, I realized the first that. First time we met. Well, it was at that point in our lives when, you know, I was a dumbass and Seth was a smartass. <laughs> uh, come to think of it, things haven't really no, changed. And really. I guess that's why we're still good friends today. But um, that was, what, 15, 16 years ago? Yeah, that was, you know, gosh, I can't remember. 20, 2000. I mean, it was about the same time I got my license, 2005. Yeah, we kind of. Folks would have graduated. So, yeah. so yeah, anyways. Was, that, that, I always, I, I like that story. Well, yeah, that I, I story. bet you do. The funny thing is, uh, the only thing I remember about Matt in college is he's always telling me that he knows exactly what he's doing. We both kind of knew what we were yeah. doing, where yeah. we were going to go. We That's gonna true. Go. I was going to be in real estate somehow with my family. You were going to be in real estate with Diane and, yep. um, and, and John, and, yep. and John doing this. Yep. And I just think it's funny that, you know, 15 years later, you know, here we are with a couple of kids and married and doing exactly what out of college we are our degrees for yep. and are actually doing. And there's not many people that can say that. I, I, That's so I'm, true. I'm fairly, I'm fairly proud of that because yes. I thankfully I didn't have to, I didn't have to go through switching to all of these things and figuring out what it was. Working for ourselves, you know, doing, doing what you like to do, doing what you love to do. I wouldn't have it any other way. Absolutely. All right. Let's get into some details, guys. Sure. I want to talk about this commercial space. I'm really intrigued by what you guys do. Oh. It's so, it's like, it's so close to me, but it's so foreign to me. Right. Um, and I think that what you guys do, um, is really important to our city, the people in the city. Um, you, you guys, and I love this. I think this is what makes your, what you do so amazing. It makes it a calling. Is it? Um, you, you guys get to have a huge impact on the people of Omaha, which is kind of cool to think about. So let's talk about, you know, you guys mentioned there's some sub-markets, four sub-markets. Do you want to talk a little bit about the different types of commercial real estate? Sure. Uh, four sub-markets would be retail, office, uh, investment property, and industrial. Okay. And investment property would mean multifamily. Multifamily. Well. Okay. Uh, so I don't know if you want to go into the kind of what we're seeing in each sure. market. Yeah, what are you seeing in each um, market? I'll take the industrial on this one. Um, in the industrial market, we've had a, a blessing and a curse for several years. I mean, 10 years ago, um, they'd probably look at you and we'd be at three to 5% vacancy rate. You know, and When we talk about vacancy rates, uh, our average vacancy rates have changed a lot over 10 years. Um, the last five years, and especially in industrial, the last three years, there was points in there where our sub markets, different parts of the city, were about a one percent vacancy. Wow! And when you're at one percent, I think there was a, a gentleman who asked a question about finding a two thousand square foot bay in Omaha right now, two thousand nineteen. Well, that same question could have came to me in two thousand seventeen, two thousand eighteen, two thousand nineteen. As a tenant, you mean? Yeah, as, as a, a tenant, prospective tenant. Yeah, as a okay. business going to try to find a small bay. Yeah. Um, the reality is there just aren't any. Wow, um, there aren't any available, and when they come available, a lot of times we're able to move them so fast with people that have been waiting on wait lists almost that we're wow. we're leasing them out. And uh, for a period of time there in Omaha, for twenty years, the rent on industrial space really didn't change. Interesting. Um, my dad would always say that we have some buildings and some industrial buildings, and uh, he'd always say that you know we have we. Our rent has stayed the same, but our taxes have increased. So the cash flow has actually decreased over time. Ah. We're finally, a couple of years ago, to a point where the rents started to increase in industrial, but they haven't increased enough to where we can build new development properties with 2,000 square foot bays. In order to build, there's a lot of spec now coming out of the ground, but they're 30, 50,000 square foot bays yeah. to make the economies of scale numbers yeah. and the financing work so that's to answer that um, Matt's question is that's the reason we haven't been able to do the small bays there's a lot of people that would love to do a 10,000 square foot building and two you know five two thousand square foot bays I'm one of them um, 
But if somebody figures out how to do the numbers to make it work, you let me know. Uh, I just haven't been able to do it. Is that is that because cost of land is high, cost to build? No, I, you know, those are okay. Cost, yeah. uh, cost to cost build. build. Yeah, cost to, cost to build is, is high, but the thing that makes it high, because the cost of build is high, um, and the small factor of the 10,000 on a yeah. piece of land, it means that the rent has to be higher than just yeah. what the industrial market in Omaha the last, the last 10 years has been, has ever seen. Yeah. So we're, we're seeing $8 industrial rents where it's $7 and $6 high sixes plus nets, um, where, or basically at one time those were, you know, low retail, retail rents mm. and so that those numbers are, are getting kind of crazy and yeah and some people are paying it on necessity yeah. um because they just have to have the space and and, and it's, that's, it's a pretty exciting time for industrial right now. C- kind of hard for the small business man it right? is very what what are they doing to i don't want to go too deep in, into one sector sure but what what are these small business people doing because i think i i had a buddy call you recently about sure. something similar to that or i don't know if he's called yet but um i think he called uh, okay. Yeah, you're good. You're good. Eco. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, so like, what? What are they? Are they sharing space? Are they? What? Um, are they just saying? Forget so it. I'll really build a garage. Yeah. I mean, it's really hard to share space. Um, uh, you know, we've had. I've. I've. I've really, literally, re- literally referred to people to lockbox storage. Wow. Um, and you know, different storage storage people out there, storage mark whoever, um, because. Some people that are looking for a space that is a like thousand square feet in an industrial space, what they really need is a storage unit. Uh, and that can accommodate until they get bigger to a- It's not a huge space. Yeah, and yeah. the reality out there in the market for a 1,200 to 1,500 square foot industrial bay, there's a finite amount because they are just not building them that small anymore. Gotcha. So you've got the 1960 build, 1970 build buildings that have these spaces and there's not there's very few. That makes sense. So mostly, what they're do- really quick, what they're what they're doing, what's ending up happening is, as they get bigger, the 1,200, 1,500 square foot, 2,000 square foot tenants get bigger. They do go out west into Sarpy County and where the new developments are, yeah. and rent a little bit more expensive space, yeah, because they need the space and they want the storefront. Yeah. And so what that does, it will alleviate some of that uh, vacancy, and you will yeah. see the rates go up here in the next year, year or so. Okay. All right, let's let's move on to something else. Um, so we got industrial. Uh, anything on retail? Any discussion yeah, in, there? In retail, we're seeing a similar low vacancy, yeah. hovering around six percent. Um, usually, the increased activity. So what they're doing, or is there something new that's out there for shopping centers? What are you guys seeing? Anything? You know, we're seeing a lot of. I will say for, for the record, retail is not necessarily my main focus. Uh, but what I'm seeing and the trends that we've been reading and um, uh, the retail that I do do, um, you know, the shopping centers like Opening Mall, those things are being, malls in general around the country are being repurposed. Yeah. Uh, whether that's office or whether that's different. Amazon different, storage. Yeah, whether it's, a, whether it's a different type of retail. Yeah. Or, yeah, you know, even there's been some concepts of you know, multifamily up top with amenities down below. Um, similar to what you see, even Chicago. well, mm-hmm. look at the hospital that was just redone the Atlas. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, it's apartments and it's amazing production. Yeah. It's an, you know, amazing ingenuity that went into the thinking of that. Those types of projects to just rehab and reutilize, um, you know, necessarily a uh, a project that at back when it was built was yeah. at, at the peak of ingenuity. Yeah, and now they just will be repurposed. Life has changed. People change. The way we do things has changed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. But the black, I mean, Blackstone, yeah. Benson, these, even Benson, you know, that it seems to be a uh, an ongoing change of oh, different yeah. things. But the general, the general bar scene, restaurants, everything down that street and up and down, they've seen, um, you know, a lot of sales to a point where the sales are finally getting to where it, it it's competitive sales. Yeah. Like competitive to where national companies are looking at these small spaces for, um, for locations to those type. So you think is. you think the nice bars and the you know the restaurants is, are they kind of the big? Not, they're not an anchor, but right. is that the anchor to these little spots? These Blackstone and uh, Benson. To, or? to a place like Benson and a place like Blackstone, when you have the, the bars and the and when you have the communities, yeah, you, you know about the that's what it is. It's a ma- it's a community right. feel, right? People want to be there. If you can walk to it, uh, if you have enough of a community around yeah. it, 
um, that will buy into you the utilization of yeah, it, yeah. then those become like almost ho like hotel and uh, apartment amenities yeah. to that neighborhood. And that's what we're seeing in yeah. the Blackstone and in the Benson area. You have more and more people. You try to go to Benson on a, on a Thursday night or Friday night in the summers when they're having a bunch Packed. of stuff. You have to park oh. you know, three or four streets away Absolutely. in the neighborhoods to try to get to the main strip. And I can tell you, my, my, a lot of my family grew up in Benson. And, yeah. And they don't recognize it anymore. Oh, yeah. It's totally changed. Yeah. Great restaurants over, over there. Mm -hmm. Al-Quran. We yeah. just went there not long ago. That place is awesome. <laughs> Um, okay, um, what else? Should we move on to multifamily? Or, um, or office. Office, yeah, let's talk about office, sorry. Let's talk uh, about office, that. it's the same kind of vacancy story, low vacancy. Yeah. Um, Boy, it's good to be an owner yeah. right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Man, I wish I owned some commercial property. And uh, a lot of that vacancy is attributable to the Class A, B-plus properties. Um, which would mean is that where it the newer construction, um, yeah. the underground parking, the amenities, mm -hmm. nicer finishes, yeah. um, and then you know less or more vacancy in the Class B minus C properties. Um, but we are seeing a lot of new construction coming up or, or on the way, and that's in the Class A, B plus properties. So we're so we're low supply everywhere. Yes. Do we see that changing anytime soon? We do. There is a there is a lot of new construction going on yeah. in retail and office. Excuse me, I've got a cold for the record. <laughs> what do you got? So I'm, I got a. We need some Kleenex. I got Altoid in here and I'm trying to chew it. There you go. Here. We're, We're live. There we go. We're live. Yeah, all right, there nice. it is. There it is. You're welcome. We're live. All right. <laughs> That's your husband, Heather. hey Brian. <laughs> I'm not. What a, what a guy, you know, he's, I mean, he's like Michael Jordan with the flu and the, the 96 finals. I mean, he's just pushing through like a champ. Yeah. Great job. <laughs> anyway, but the office sector is, is the one that is, is probably flourishing the most in the new construction sense. Um, you can just see it driving up and down yeah. the streets that you, every news article, every, um, you know, something we you read in the paper, all the offices coming out of the ground. Yeah. And you know, we've heard in the last three days, we, we've heard there's over 700,000 square feet coming out. And then we heard there's over a million. I don't think everybody, it depends on owner, user, and what's coming out. And who's, when we say owner, user, we mean a corporation that's going there. And yeah. They're themselves. building their own building. They're building their own building. Yeah, sure. Um, there's also a lot of spec office. Wow. Um, Coming out of the ground um, with partially leased, you know, and they're very favorable. Um, things that have happened all over, and you know, part of that is you know, Top Golf that's going out Woo! by West Rose. I know it's a big thing. Ready. Top Golf, somebody Ready. Has, hashtag that so we get a lot of views. But um, yeah, that's that, right. Hashtag that, Top Golf. That's a much needed <laughs> amenity. We should do a show there. Like Top Golf, so great. Okay, next anyway. Time. <laughs> well, that's a much needed amenity to that market. Yeah. To Westeros in general, as the retail, as the mall, um, but as like the Westeros uh, office complex that yeah. our company, Dale Scott, or our company represents. Uh, but that whole area uh, benefits for from a pull like Top Golf because there'll be people that want to have that amenity. Yeah. To them, and they're gonna they're gonna be there for a while. They can have parties there. Right. And that just creates yeah. business for the businesses around there. Yeah, I mean, we're our office awesome. is excited about it just because we're yeah we are located in, in one one two one three Davenport Street, Suite three hundred. <laughs> wow, check it out. There's my plug. Yes. Um, but so close for that old old mill area, and old I think mill. you're gonna have old mill, Regency, West Rose, all pull towards that for business parties, and that's yeah. what the top a lot of what Top Golf does well. Well, Vince Lisi, if you're watching this. Um, I know we got some stuff going on in and around that area for our Midtown agents. I'm seeing a company party uh, for for our new office happening uh, over there at Top Golf. What do you guys think? Yeah, I, I think like that I think sense. we should have an invite. I think you should have I an invite. I think we should have an invite. I don't know. We're, I agree. We have, we have to talk to a couple people. We'll get on the horn. I get a text right after the show. But yeah. No, <laughs> uh, how much time do we got left? We're good. <laughs> We're good. We're good. We got about five minutes left. Should we move to multifamily? Because I think that's something that All right. that every man sure. really is interested in. Yeah. Uh, everybody feels like, hey, everybody I want to get there. I want to buy a duplex. I want to buy an apartment complex and be a millionaire. 
Okay. Right? Yeah. That's what I want to do. Well, I'll tell you, uh, my wife and I were 20... Uh, I won't age my wife. I was about 25. Yeah, don't do that. Um, right? And I had my first sixplex, and uh, uh, I will honestly say it was a nightmare. Yeah? Uh, yeah, it was a nightmare. Right. It made us money, <laughs> Yeah, but I was down there all the time. Oh, yeah. I was plunging toilets. And wow. you know, you know, doing some of the maintenance yourself to cut to because you want to cut costs, keep the those yeah. those close. Um, so it's not for everybody. So what's the what's the so that was your first. That one. was my first. What right. was the, so, like the main lesson you learned from that? Give me like one or two. The main lesson is it, apartments in multifamily um, take a certain amount. There's like three people that buy it. Yeah. Okay. You know, there's the person that has the, um, an income where they have a job. Um, on the side and they want somebody to manage apartment for them and take care of it and are collecting a cash flow and they're buying it strictly as an, an investment vehicle. vehicle. Okay. There's a second kind of person that, that buys it and they want to run it as a business almost. They want to keep cut costs. They want to buy as much units as possible. And they, yeah. You know, they do that for a living. That's yeah. where they make their cash flow. Syndications. Right. And, stuff. Okay. and the third, the third party, um, in this instance, we'll, we'll put, you know, institutional buyers, uh, large partnership syndications, yeah. uh, people that, that buy them and have managers locally like CBRE okay. um, and other people that, that manage them for them. But uh, part, multifamily is great. My whole my whole family personally got started in multifamily yeah. and I had hundreds of units here in town. We still have hundred units here in town Yeah, and it's great um, in that, you know, they are a... <sighs> For banking, they're like the beauty. Everybody wants to bank an apartment complex. Everybody wants to talk about the apartment yeah. sector. Um, and in some cases, like duplexes, and I think you guys you probably have more experience with those than yeah. we do. But probably a little you, bit more residential. Yeah, they they seem to be an easy in yeah. to a start to what they want to do. Yeah. Um, and for me, it was. I, I did, I, I, I did have the sixplex, and yeah. I was able to exchange that into a commercial building. Yeah. And really decided, you know, I don't want to be, I don't want to be the guy they call. Yeah. I want to be. Uh, I want to deal with businesses and corporations rather than, um, rather than the local person necessarily. Yeah. Right. Right. You know, that, that was me. That, that was me personally when I was twenty five. Now it, it's changed over the years. We'll we'll accommodate what we can. Well, the older we get, the less we want to deal with. That's for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Uh, let's see here. What What else? Well, you would do the. Uh, we thought about doing the most interesting transaction we've done. Yeah, let's day. talk about. Yeah, I forgot about that. Okay, so most interesting transaction you've ever done. I bet you guys have some ridiculous, crazy oh, stories. Yes. We do have some crazy <laughs> stories that. We can't get into it, so we'll get. We'll Come get, on, we'll get into, we'll get tell the, us. We'll get into the one or two that we can, um, that we believe we've got all the permissions for. So disclosures have been signed. Disclosures for uh, uh, <laughs> moving forward, you know, just this morning. Yes, um, just this morning. But no, one of the most interesting ones we had. Tally and I had a. Um, I know I can't take the call right now. Um, yeah. Airplane mode. Right. Exactly. Forgot we had a. Um, a listing at 10404 Essex Court, um, which is a, which in itself is a condo regime. Okay. Um, an office building. But an office building, Regency. and and okay. one half of it is a two story, and one owner had both stories. So it's basically that the the one side is a twenty some thousand twenty plus thousand square foot office building. Okay. He had it for sale. Mm -hmm. Had it for sale for a while. It was a good client of mine. Um, brought Talia on and say, you know, let's lease it, sell it, let's go do something, right? So, yeah. in so the, he had for sale or he lease. Had, he had for sale or lease. And, yeah. and Is that a, a lot of times how it goes? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. it gives you more options yeah. with right. property. Right? Makes sense. Okay. Um, and then I had met a, um, a, a friend or somebody that, that uh, um, at White Lotus Group that, that I knew, um, Arun Agarwal, and he had... A property that uh, he was trying to sell okay. um, that I knew would be perfect for my client. Yeah, and one thing led to another where my client saw the property that um, Arun had, the White Lotus Group had, and White Lotus Group saw this property that we had for sale, and yeah. one thing led to another that it worked out that it was an exact swap. 
Wow. And when they walked away from the t- the table, they literally walked away with keys. Yeah. And no money was it, no money was it really exchanged between parties. That's incredible. And you hear about Did they it? have like the same due I mean, diligence period of Yeah, like, everything they were just like there's two crossing separate, each other's paths. Yeah, and that's what made it, that's what made it really tough because it's two two separate contracts, so we had to keep two separate files, the yeah. title companies had to keep two separate files. There was a lot that went into it, a lot of people that helped us, we really appreciated it. Um, I can imagine the challenge there because it seems so easy, but it's well, probably it's, even a little bit more well, difficult. Well, one of those things that they teach us in college that you can do, and you see it a lot in farms, because you've got the neighbor's farm and this butts up with my farm, Real similar. And you, you, know, you can swap them out yeah. and there are similar values. Yeah. Uh, but with properties, there's so much more that goes into different types. Is that like a quit claim deed? Is yeah, that no, how that works? I don't, I'm, that? I, I'm not going to, I don't want to get into the details well, of that. Show I, 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 actually, I actually don't know <laughs> off the top of my head, but I, but what it, how we did it, but um, it, it just worked out amazingly. And and afterward, we um, White Lotus Group and and we were able to um, keep the listing as far as trying to continue to lease it. Yeah. Um, uh, and our previous client and still a client uh, was happy with the income producing property he got from okay. the vacant property that he was just released of. Yeah. Um, and we were able to about six months later do a a, a large lease. Um, in Essex Court, in Bacon, right? yeah, in Essex Court. So somebody who I think is very close to your guys's yeah thing here, yeah, uh, and not, he's not going to want to say it. Uh, it's to Berkshire Hathaway, yeah. Um, to, I, I don't care. To you guys, at Old Mill or Essex, excuse me, Regency, yeah, now office, Regency they, office. Hopefully here in June, I believe. We're yeah. pretty pumped about it. We're pretty excited. I've I've seen a couple of things on it. Yeah. It's going to be a sweet building. So yeah. thank you guys for doing that. Yeah. It's uh, you know, honestly, a lot of people went into play. Um, and there was a lot of help, uh, a couple of people from CBRE were involved in the construction management, some things are going on there and it's going to look really cool. It's going to change that face of I-80 as you drive. For sure. Past it. That's um, a big area. I mean, that's an important spot. Right. Yeah, you know, it, honestly, White Lotus Group is doing a great job. They moved their corporate offices down yeah. stairs. Oh, okay. So they filled the other portion of the building. Uh, we do have a couple busy. thousand square feet there for lease, so if anyone wants to give me a call. Hey! Uh, 402 hey, 214 uh, 616. What was your number again? It's 402 214 We'll put that in the show notes. All right, so... Um, we got just about one or two minutes left, guys. Is, is there anything that we missed today? Any parting thoughts that uh, you think people should know? Um, Tell ya. <laughs> <laughs> Promise her I want to just call her out. Do you have any clients that are that are looking for anything in particular right now? You know, we it, it it's a it's a tough market out there. It's yeah, tough to find yeah. something tough to buy. To buy. Yeah, and like yeah. I mentioned, a lot of times and increasingly, it's it's an off market deal. Yeah, so. It, some, some yeah, search. you know, right now we have a lot of there's a, we have a lot of buyers out there, a lot of people with money standing on the sidelines, um, because the interest rates have increased yeah. so drastically over the cap rates rest, are low. You know, the cap rates are still too low. Yeah, and I think you know eventually everything will come together and we'll get some stuff out there. But yeah, um, we are working a lot of owner user buildings, a lot of stuff for sale, a lot of land that yeah. we're trying to move. And uh, um, yeah, I mean honestly, if you are all of our contact information and our pages, it, it's uh, www.cbre.com backslash Seth.Campbell. They'll be able to see anything that we're doing and that we're pretty good about posting stuff on there. Cool. And we'll link that up here to the show and all that fun stuff. And sure. um, You know what, guys? Thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, no, thanks for having us. This is fun. So much information. I mean, there's so much. And, and I'm sure for a lot of people out there, a lot of it, it's like, you know, this is right. crazy. But it's really important stuff. And anybody that owns a business, you know, they need to be hooked up with somebody like you guys, preferably mm-hmm. one of you guys, yes. right? Well, right. And, and, and it could be one of us, obviously, that, that makes us money. But yeah. in general, if you are doing a lease, especially on the leasing side, if yeah. you are doing a lease, everybody thinks that, you know, they go to a site, they, they go to a site, they look it up on LoopNet or CoStar, sometimes it can be pretty easy. And almost yeah. nowadays it's too easy to yeah. get yourself in trouble. Yeah. So, um, and I think it kind of, that kind of references you and, and uh, some of the other. The right information in the wrong hands right. is pretty and, dangerous. Uh, and I would just say, whether it's me or Talia, just always have somebody looking out for you. Yes. Knowing where the fiduciary is, where yeah. the agency is. 
And at all times, um, make sure you trust that person. And if you do, you're not going to get it go wrong. Yeah. Well, Seth, Talia, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, I think that's going to be it for us today on Real Estate in Your Underwear. We're looking for more guests, um, mostly local people. Uh, we'd love to have if you own a small business, um, even a restaurant, um, if you're doing something really fun and cool and interesting here in Omaha, give us a shout. We'd love to have you on, uh, but we can spread it out. Um, we're having tons of fun here in our tiny little office, but we'll bring coffee to you. Um, and uh, we usually have a pretty good time. And uh, every Thursday, 10 a.m., Real Estate in Your Underwear is on, uh, but we won't be in our underwear, but you can be in yours. Thanks, guys, for, again, for being here. Thank you. See you next week.